Zuckerberg, that guy. I'm thinking his platforms need a little bit of work. I mean, for supposed super genius, I mean, I think we're seeing some issues. Anyway, we're gonna try this again. Hopefully, we don't crash again. I just don't know. Let's try the intros again. Hi, Harm. Hi, Nikki. Uh oh, it's not looking super promising. Hi, Robin. I have lots to say. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, it Thanks. looked like there was going to be a delay, but there isn't. You know, you just really don't know what's going to happen these days in technology land. So did we think that, um, oops, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I just try to keep my composer, not throw things. I was going to say, um, so is it 60 minutes or is it six minutes? <laughs> you know, send a memo. Let people know. Like, why do we have to go foraging through the internets to find out this information? Oh, man. Coach Robin. Robin. Boo. Just, you know, just put that flow on while you're teaching that just, hundred. You know what? They'll <laughs> learn something. Tell them it's a different kind of lesson. We're working out their minds. <laughs> ah, thanks, Rachel. Looking forward to belly time tomorrow. Ooh. Rachel's a client. She, her mom, and her sister. Three days a week we get buff, but it's been a little bit of a sketch week. So, you know, anyway. <sighs> Nikki, geez, what is going on? On planet Earth. Uh, right? Dumpster mm. fire. Well, what are your thoughts? There, uh, there's so many. So there's Shikari. Shikari, am I saying her name right? Yes. Shikari Richardson. Um, there is the three men who stood by and watched George Floyd being murdered. Um, they have just been convicted in federal court. You know, yes. ignoring As ignoring someone's civil rights. Um, I mean. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we know, <laughs> of course, we know the heavy is Russia invading Ukraine. Let's start there. So Glenn has uh, workmates, for lack of a better term. I'm sure there's an adult term for this, but I can't come up with it. He has <laughs> workmates in, in Ukraine. And uh, this morning when he signed on and started working. <laughs> Are we, I mean, this, this, is, <laughs> this is my studio. This is just the, I have a barn door. Okay, here's... I'm going to pan. Basically, my studio is a square. And there's... She's in a different corner every week, yes, which is I'm why in a you don't corner. recognize it. Sometimes I'm... she's laying on the floor. <laughs> Nikki just, you know, she gets around that square. <laughs> yeah, I have an amazing barn door. So, yeah. So I thought I'd give you that view today. <laughs> so Glenn's workmate uh, sent them all a lengthy post. She's or he, I'm not sure which one, is in the Ukraine. Um, and talking about how, you know, they were l just sitting around waiting to see what was going to happen, waiting for the bombs to drop, not knowing how you explain to your children what is coming next. What does, what do the next days or even just the next 24 hours looks what does that look like? And mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine the terror, both from the eyes of the adults, obviously, who've been through this before, mm -hmm. but in preparing your children for that. I mean, we have a lot of issues in this country that aren't super kosher, but I will tell you that when we look at the nonsense that's happening in our 
politics right now. And then you look at what these children are dealing with and how that's right. going to affect them in the future. Right. It's a lot. Well, and for, for someone who, he just feels like it. Because he can. Now, my favorite part of it is he just declared two of the, whatever they are, the areas of the country, Donetsk and the other one. Um, he declared them independent so that he could then go and take them over. Now, could you imagine, Nikki, I've declared your house <laughs> mine. I'll be there, you know, plane plus travel. I'll be there in about an hour and a half and get out. It's now mine. Oh, uh, well, I don't know if that was the best example, Misty, because people actually do that to people with eminent domain, <laughs> and they go in and tell people actually do that, so. <laughs> and they tell people to leave their house, <laughs> and they squat in their house, <laughs> so. True, okay, fair, <laughs> fair. but you, like, know actually, what I mean. you know where I'm going with that, no, I mean, an entire region. Right, but it's it's interesting because it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. It's someone who has worked hard to attain something and basically someone else just gets to all mine now, all mine. And Can so I I know on NPR, gosh, I guess I guess I guess I feel like it's been like a few weeks I don't have a great concept of time right now. But um, there's a very large Ukrainian population in Chicago. I, we, have, we are the, like, everybody lives here. <laughs> well, it's a large city. I mean, I would expect that. <laughs> so, um, but, and NPR was discussing and interviewing people um, in the city because these guys were ready. They were ready, bags packed, to go back to Ukraine to fight for their country. Um, and you know, the, the woman was like, oh, you know, cause I, I, it's so gross because, you know, she's like, but you're here, you're in America. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> and there's a cherry on top, <laughs> like, you know? And they're like, no. And they're like, our parents and grandparents didn't leave Ukraine because they were wanted to be in America. They're like, they left the Soviet Union. <laughs> It was just like, man, I really like the plants over there. <laughs> it's like, you know, but it's again, like, it speaks to the lack of understanding of history that, that yes. many Americans hold to just think that, you know, people don't just never mind. I or can't. that they think that this country is so great. And it's like, you know, people live in the countries that they live in and they stay in those countries, even even well-traveled people because they like where they live they like the country that they come from they like the culture and people are like oh yeah there's a culture attached to these different places there's a history there's a familiarity you feel home sure and so just just an fyi people like you know not everyone on, on planet earth wants to live in the u.s <laughs> Well, and not everyone that came, I mean, they may have come here and adopted it and adopted the culture, but that doesn't mean that the rest of their culture is wiped out. They still are very tied to their home, their mm -hmm. homeland, their ancestral whatevers. And it's very, very important that they maintain those ties. And, uh, you know, we see that with a lot of other communities in the United States as well or just simply they still have family there. Yeah, I, I think that that's too, but that's it as well. But so I will say that my Ukrainian friends are very, very American and very, very Ukrainian even still. And those traditions mm -hmm. are important to them. And some of them have never been there. Mm -hmm. they, they have had family come here, but they've never been there. Mm -hmm. But yet at the same time, they are still as passionate about that part of their heritage as they are about their American heritage. Mm -hmm. 
the history that they know of the Ukraine is not necessarily the history that's being told right now. Uh, Putin said the other day, you know, he was talking about the richness. Um, are they talking about the war in school with Harrison? I have no idea because Harrison doesn't even talk. So <laughs> I, I, I have no idea if they even use words at Harrison School. I think this is a whole generation of mute children. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? Well, you know, you've got the Tucker Carlson's of the world, including That's Tucker Carlson. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Who's thank basically you siding that. with Putin. That guy would side with anybody as long as they're disgusting and gross and pervy. Um, and ride horses. But, you know, <laughs> the, the history that Putin is telling about the Ukraine is interesting uh, because, you know, and this is a part of our Soviet heritage and blah, blah, blah. But it's really interesting because one of the uh, Ukrainian, I believe it was a Ukrainian pundit, posted a picture of what the Ukraine looked like, what Kiev looked like in the 12th, yeah, 12th century, mm -hmm. and then what Moscow looked like. And Moscow was literally a field of nothing. Didn't mm -hmm. even exist. Ukraine was first. Mm -hmm. But again, when you change the history, when you rewrite the books and you know, Putin can write whatever he wants. That's what gets taught. That's, I mean, it's not like there's a whole lot of freedom in Russia. Ask Navalny, he'll tell you. He wants their stuff. Like he, he wants he, all the stuff. He wants, he all, wants all, he just wants the stuff. And he literally was like, mm, I asked mine, you nicely. Mine right, I asked you nicely. Well, you can't have my stuff. So, and then there, it's, there's such a, There's such a look at me world. Well, what did he say? He said that he was going to bring the Soviet, the, the honor and the glory of the Soviet Union back. And that has been his goal since the 90s. And look yeah. at what he's doing. I mean, nobody will speak to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, he has, you know, the scary part you know, his mention of nuclear. The scary part is he really has done or greatly attempted to do everything that he said he wants to do. And he had a partner in crime with previous POTUS. A dick tater <laughs> and a tater tot. <laughs> and so you know, he's looking at the world and he's just like, yeah, what you gonna do? You know, meanwhile, over in Tucker Carlson land, you know, we have just these crazy people who are just like, this is not okay. Um, you shouldn't be siding with Putin for all the reasons you shouldn't be siding with Putin. Um, and at the end of the day, there is no reason other than the fact that he wants what he, he wants the stuff. Listen, that guy, first of all, TP, I mean, TC, Tucker Carlson. Let's talk about it, right? Because. Oh, I thought you were was, just calling him toilet paper. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I kind of am. But let's talk about it. Tucker Carlson was very, very spirited and animated, I'll say, when Obama drew the red line and then he drew another red line and then he drew another red line, talking about the weakness of the office and of the United States because we did not take a st strong line against Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia. <laughs> I don't okay. know what Sylvia did wrong. <laughs> But Syria is what Damn I'm you, Sylvia. To say. Ah, Sylvia. Yeah, you know, it, it's what happened. I don't know, but I can't I control that anyway. But here's the thing. Let, let's let's break it down now. We have massive instability happening in Ukraine 
This president, our current POTUS, he's making strong statements. He's at least initiated sanctions. He's adding sanctions to it. And old TPTC is cri criticizing him at best for what? Actually doing what he said he was going to do. Thank you. Uh, you. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? And I don't mean wonder, <laughs> like honestly. And then I, I I do not laugh because this is this is so serious and it and it's so sad because you know you're looking at people and you're like why is he doing this and and I can't get past preschool I can't get past little Vladimir just wanting the blocks even though it's not his turn even though he didn't wait in line like I just can't get past preschool. Meanwhile, we haven't heard anything from North Korea. And I just sort of get this picture of Kim sitting in a theater by himself, watching this with a big bucket of popcorn. Listen, <laughs> I, I'm not even worried about that one it's it's china that's more of a worry for me and china's already said that biden has escalated this so oh it's harmony completely is ridiculous at tucker carlson why do democrats want you to hate putin has putin shipped every middle class I job like in your town to russia did he manufacture a worldwide pandemic that wrecked your business yeah, and more. Yeah, I heard that yesterday. I mean, when he pops up in my feed, I actually want to vomit in my own shoes. But I have a really, really well-invested shoe collection, so I'm not going to barf on my own shoes. But what I will say about it is that we have leaders, and sadly, Tucker Carlson is a leader. I won't get into of what. He is a leader. People listen to him, yeah. People don't, they don't just listen to him. They do what he says. Mm -hmm. And over the past year, he has been doing nothing but incitement. And if you and I incited anything, we would already be locked up. The key would be gone. They would have burned us wherever we are. It would be a complete disaster. And yet he's allowed to continue what he's doing because it's not news. It's infotainment. It's a problem. But Again, you know, the United States is on its own spiral and it just, it's going to be what it is. We can't do any better with that. I, I, I just pray for the people of Ukraine. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I, I just think about the kids. That, that really upsets me. Not that I don't care about the adults, but it, it's a level of trauma that they're going to have to deal with for a long, long time, maybe their whole lives. And I don't know that Vlad's going anywhere. He has a goal. He's not going to finish until he's completed it. And, um, you know, if you read anything about him and read about how he says the Cold War affected him and how he felt about Gorbachev and Yeltsin and all of that, you mm -hmm. know why he's doing what he's doing. And, you know, there's no changing that mindset. I, I don't believe. No. It's dark. So you mentioned um, Shikari. Uh, can I jump in really quick, just because you were talking about um, infotainment. So I, I, I've been hearing this about Kanye and I don't follow the Kardashians. And I'm like, so the, the article, I believe it was written by um, HuffPost. And basically they were like, this man is a danger. Stop egging him on. He bought a house across the street from his soon-to-be ex-wife. He's imploring his fans to support him on this journey. Incitement again. And he has fans, which this is very R. Kelly to me. Um, he has fans who are, you know, go, go save your family, go work for your family, go, you know, go fight for your family. And I'm like, no, that's stalking. 
It is that's, stalking. That, that's stalking. That's um, endangering a whole bunch of people. The Kardashians are taking these great lengths. And don't get me wrong. Obviously, the Kardashians are known for not choosing <laughs> the right man. <laughs> but at least, but at least they go away. <laughs> What he's Here's doing is stalking, it's escalating, and it's dangerous. And she has, what do they have, four kids? Like 40, I don't know. I mean, it's a whole damn tribe. <laughs> it's Psalm, it's Chicago, it's... North and... North. I thought there was one more. The Saint. S <laughs> Shut up. Here's the thing about this <laughs> that really drives me crazy. People aren't looking at it that way, though. People are saying, oh, well, you know what? They're the Kardashians. And Kim Kardashian wore cornrows once, and therefore she is not worthy of. And at the end of the day, any person put in this situation is in danger. And that, you know, everyone laughs Kanye off. He's crazy. He's this, he's that. Well, one, he's he hangs out with the football dude. He's already said what his diagnosis is. He's already said it. And he's already said that he doesn't take his pills. And we're already seeing his behavior escalate. At some point, somebody has to give a damn about the fact that not only is he doing this live and in real time, but like you said, he's inviting other people into the mayhem. He is saying it, he's inciting this action against his family, against the boyfriend, all of that. His kids, his kids are babies. And her saving grace right now is her celebrity because she can afford bodyguards. I was just about to say she can afford security 24 <clears throat> seven. She probably already had it. So now you have Ray Ray, Paco, Mikhail, whoever, right? Whoever is that guy in whatever culture who just decides that, you know, if I can't have her, no one can. So. Oh, that's probably. a fair question, Harmony. I don't know. <laughs> probably. So I don't think he likes anything brown. Darker than a suntan? Mm -mm. <laughs> Orange suntan. So not even like real brown. But you now have men who idolize Kanye and his behavior 100%. and have just become empowered because of his celebrity. And then he hangs out with football dude who beats up chicks and stalks them. So um, now you have these people, these, I'm going to say men because Kanye is a man. Yes, we know that women can be abusers too, but I'm going to say men because Kanye is a man. He is emboldening these men to keep up their stocking. He is challenging them. And we, uh, we know how these stocking and orders oh, of protection. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Tucker Carlson praises Kanye West as most compelling voice against Planned Parenthood. Oh, I guess he, he thinks that, you know, Kanye can get one thing right, I'm sure. But it's just this rinse, wash, repeat. Men can do whatever they want in a relationship. And when they don't get their way, they can behave like imbeciles. And then they can pawn it off as, you're not fighting for your family. You fight for your family when your partner still maybe has some desire to be with you. I don't know, after you go on to different concert venues and you blast out your partner for things that really should be kept behind closed doors, you call out your child, you do all of these things, you certainly should not be surprised when your partner is like, I'm gonna moonwalk out of here. <laughs> and, and granted, you know, to me, it all comes back to this idea of protecting people in power because of status. Yep. 
if it was anybody else, and I'm not going to say it would be easy because we know that in regular real lives, this kind of thing happens all the time too. Yes. But the lengths to which Kanye puts this out there publicly on the world stage and then takes it back and does another thing and takes it back, you know, in real life, there would be checks, I think, uh, somebody would say something bad about it. And, and I think these other celebrities are starting to come out now and, and speak against what he's doing. But at this point, I don't know what it's going to take to get him to back down. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty, his behavior is pretty egregious. And I, not that it's okay for any man, and I, I never want to imply that, but I hate that it's a black man. It's like, really? It's like, really, dude? You know, I find you know? him to be so appalling. I don't even think it's, he's a person that color doesn't matter. Does he matter if you put him in any other shade, he'd sure. still be disgusting. Yeah, he's oh, horrible absolutely, absolutely. But, but it's, also, it's also just like, why, why, why? And it doesn't mean that because you're a black man, you can't make bad choices and that you can't you know, do wrong, but it's like, seriously, dudes, you know, save face, sit down, regroup, recollect, reconnect. But we Mind you, society <laughs> have to do better too, though. You know, yes. again, we, we, why are we, we, why is this being egged on? We love, we honor, you know, people who have celebrity. We tell our kids to idolize this guy and that guy and the other person because of their status and their wealth. We don't care. I'm using the we loosely, of course. I'm not speaking about anybody on this call or whatever. Sure. But what I'm saying is, is that we as a society covet celebrity more than we covet really important traits like honesty and truth and character and all these mm -hmm. other things. And so this keeps happening. And this guy gets people to spend $700 for a damn sweatshirt. So imagine, just imagine. Well, and so I know, uh, I have to stop saying like seven years ago, because really it's probably more. I know like 10, 12 years ago, oh, Robin's gone. I know like 10, 12 years ago, I knew people who were going to R. Kelly concerts. And I'm like, you live in Chicago, you should know better. Because anybody who lived in Chicago knew he was Chester Molester. And I was a dancer, and we knew dancers who danced with him. So we, we knew the stories. And they weren't stories. I don't mean that these were fabricated, you know, the, the, they were stories that after the fifth person Consistent. told you and the same stories were maybe within three to 5% of each other in terms of detail. Okay. Yeah. But people were still going to his concerts. People like, are still playing his music now. I, I'm like, I, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is why he felt like he could do it and do it for so long and have an entourage of grown ass men complicit. Yeah. His manager forged Aaliyah's birth certificate. So that when they could his pastor get... knew it was forged and married them. And it's like, this is, it cannot be more important. Celebrity cannot be more important than humanity. And look, now that R. Kelly has been convicted, they're fighting over him on two, <laughs> in two different states. They're like, nah, go ahead, do your do your thing, get your, get all your stuff, get your court case done, convict him, and then ship his ass over here to the East Coast because he's got stuff over here too. But again, and, he wouldn't have been able to get away with all of that if it weren't for those pesky kids. No, I'm kidding. He wouldn't have been <laughs> able to get away with all of that had the people around him not been more interested in protecting their status than they were in protecting the women that were sucked into that crap to begin with. I mean, from top to bottom, it was depravity 101. 
including the girl's father, Sparkle's niece, and a lot of people may not know Sparkle, she was an up and coming star. She's in the documentary. Um, her niece is the girl in the video that he urinated on. Well, her father knew and accepted a job from R. Kelly. Okay. <laughs> so he knew this grown man was grooming and then eventually having sex nope. with nope. his 14 year old daughter. Nope. Knew she was the girl in the video and just started working for him. Can you imagine being the daughter and that level of trauma? Your father is supposed to be your protector. Mm -hmm. When things don't go that way, you know, it's, it's bad. It's terrible. But then when your protector not only doesn't protect you, but then it goes and takes the job with the perpetrator of your, yep. your broken soul. And was reportedly still working for him when the documentary was being filmed. Mm -mm. No, I can't. I just can't. It's heartbreaking to me. And Sparkle tried her best. When she saw the video, she said, that's my niece. She's like, I know what my niece looks like. She's like, that's my niece. Mm -hmm. He shut her mouth so quick, he tanked her career. She was a rising star. Like, she would do, yep. Yes. Thank yep. you, Harmony. The singer mm -hmm. Sparkle, born Stephanie Edwards, says R. Kelly raped and urinated on her 14-year-old niece in a video dubbed The P-Tape. Mm -hmm. So so it's, if you can stomach it, I did, I did watch it. Um, and when you hear about the level of manipulation, he was basically running his own little cult. For sure he was. Yes. And is that way these things always go? Yes. And it's, again, it's the infotainment. It's, you know, even watching that documentary, there's a, there's a level of celebrityism, or I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I'm trying to say. But it was the one thing that keeps coming up you, Jim DeRogatis, who is the music producer on NPR, he's one of the music guys in Chicago. In Chicago, let me be clear. Jim DeRogatis, white guy, Italian, he has been talking about R. Kelly for a very long time. And he is like, why is this not important? And he says it, is it because they're black girls? When I say a long time, I mean probably close to like, 10, 12 years. He has been oh, talking I it was about longer than that. I it could, it could 20 years. Yeah. So, yeah. but Jim DeRogatis would report on this and he's like, why is, he's like, why does this guy get to get away with this? So again, it's that idea that this person's celebrity is so, and it's like, why is their why is their pedestal so necessary for the public to maintain? Why is that? Because you're not getting kickbacks. I mean, so <laughs> I don't, I'm not getting a check. <laughs> like, I don't but I don't listen to They music. might pee on it. But um, <laughs> so I'm not willing to say. I mean, I'm sure the fact that it was black girls is a huge factor. But I'm not willing to say that that's all that it was because I've been watching The Secret Life of Playboy. I think that's what it's called. The documentary on a and &E about the Playboy empire and Hugh Hefner. Oh, okay. It is that. Okay. It's, it is so gross. Now, here's, here's my thoughts. When you have that amount of power you've got that money you've got those connections you have curated 
your environment to uplift certain people of status in the community, people who are basically, you know where all their bodies are buried, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Then you create a, a bubble of protection for yourself. Mm -hmm. There's no way that people didn't think that Hugh Hefner was up to, well, people, I mean, we know the FBI did, but they really only cared about the drugs. They didn't care about the fact that there was potential human trafficking there. They didn't care about the fact that women were dying. Uh, women were working within that empire and supporting it. Mm -hmm. And granted, it was a different time. So for some people, it was their only way out. Mm -hmm. I have issues with coming out like, after somebody is dead and buried and they can't defend themselves mm -hmm. um, and, and going after them. But again, I don't think you can look at these stories and they're so very similar over and over and over again and say that all of these women just got together on a really mean and nasty Tuesday afternoon and made <laughs> up terrible stories about it. Again, it because circling back to R. Kelly, it's the same thing. It comes back to power and it comes back to wealth. And if you've got police, you may have some videos of them doing things that are not so kosher. And you have community members, same thing. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the protection that you need. Mm -hmm. And then you go, so you have this man and, and you say, well, if he's so Three. And so you have two things. You know, the people versus Larry Flint. You have Larry Flint um, and you have, um, you know, who doesn't love a Woody Harrelson? But you, <laughs> you have Larry Flint who's basically like, yeah, I'm tacky trashy. Deal with it. But I'm tacky trashy. And this is who I am. And there are no, you know, secrets. This is who I am. And then you have this man who's debonair, who's sleek, Slick. who looks this way. And then X number of years later, you have Jeffrey Epstein and you're like, see, yeah. the proclivities of men. It's just a pattern. Well, and Hefner, he was even more slick because as Armini's little news post here says, he positioned himself as a very, very active equal rights advocate, mm -hmm. right? He wanted the, the sexual freedom and uh, mm -hmm. I guess the term I'm looking for is parity. Women, men, it's okay. Everybody has the right to be free. Mm -hmm. But that made it, this makes me so angry because that made it even easier for him. Yep to be able to get away with what he was doing. Yep. Uh, and it made him a target on purpose so that they were focusing on that piece of it yep. and not looking at the exploitation and the trafficking and all the other things that were going on behind closed doors. Slick. Gross. Yeah. Incredibly misogynist. And I say that not because it, all of the other things aren't bad enough. But it's still just this thing where it's just this rinse, wash, repeat. Women are just property. And, you know, taking a look at the Supreme Court now and, and taking a look at, take, you know, men making statements about a prospect for the Supreme Court as if she, she's a black woman, but as if she isn't the judge, as if she didn't practice law prior to as becoming a judge. As if she's a, a judge. sympathy hire. Right. I'm like, well, she still had to, they didn't give her an honorary law degree and then give her an honorary appointee as a judge and then say, oh, okay, now let's put her on the Supreme No, like she, she, she did the do. She did the stuff that she was supposed to do. You know, they, they didn't just 
go to law school, you know, some random law school and be like, what you got? Ah, she looks good. Pick that one. <laughs> right, what you got? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, no, she has a career. She went to law school. She passed the bar. She worked as an attorney and now she worked. I mean, she did the stuff. And that's the thing, you know, women, I think, are the downfall of women. Because why? I think in a lot of ways, if we would just work to uplift and support each other. Now, I'm not saying I'm uplifting and supporting everybody. I will never, ever, I, you'll hear it here first and last, I will never, ever uplift and support Candace Owens. Never, <laughs> ever, did I say ever because I mean it. And there is just ever okay never will i support her but that said i recognize that she is a woman and okay well that's about it <laughs> because again she is not pro woman she no is what is pro she pro herself yeah opportunism you know there are other women out there who i may not agree with generally speaking Right. But at least at the end of the day, I know that they are working to advance women. They're not sure. doing things that are going to keep women under the boot of men. And then they're you know, defining who's a woman, what's a woman, all of these things, working against all of the progress that we have worked to create. <laughs> Miss Supreme Court swimsuit edition. Yes. Um, words my friend I don't even know um, but but yeah I, I can't I can't get over the fact that you know again we're looking at at Texas we're looking at Georgia we're looking at all of these places where if the current trend continues mm -hmm. women will be less mobile less free mm -hmm. less able to guarantee themselves and their children mm -hmm a life if they don't mm -hmm. have a man in their life. Should it be this way? Absolutely not. And the only way it can stop, the largest voting block in our country is white women. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that's where it has to start. That, that isn't the majority of people who can vote but again, we know that everyone doesn't vote. So we know that. So the largest number of people who regularly vote is white women. And so for every, for every voter line where someone passing out water is arrested, for every, um, what is it, um, centurions who are 100 years plus, Centenarians. Centenarians who can't find their birth certificate because, well, they were born to a midwife. And, and so, they just, I mean, who had birth certificates 100 years ago? Not everybody. And right. definitely not if you were of any sort of shade. But we don't, but we don't just have that. We don't just have people who are 100 years old. We now have people who are 106. 108 we there were no radio waves <laughs> and so someone has lived this life and you're gonna say with your polite southern twang it's just so great that you're still here but without that birth certificate i just can't give you this driver's license you can't say it's just the south though because it's no not. you can't no you can't it is everywhere it is everywhere but definitely in the south less in the north people were born to midwives well that's true uh, I, I mean I, I can't really meaning disregard that but you have people that were born in the south that have migrated north sure you know, uh, you've got all of that stuff but if it's not the the birth certificate thing it's something else Sure. You know, essentially, it's we're Sunday. back at poll ta taxes and grandfather clauses. It's Sunday. Oh, no, we don't need to vote on Sunday. 
Why not? <laughs> and so it's all of these things. And I'm going to kick this can down the road and flip the switch. Shikari Richardson. Whoa. That was yep. a pivot. I mean, it you sure really was. Just like, ow, my neck. Well, it was a pivot because it is what it is. And it's still against a black female. It's more than that. And I mean, it's, it's way it's, more than that. It's the thing that bothers me is everyone is saying that the young Russian skater is, oh, well, she's a teenager. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's this. Oh, well, it's that. She tested positive. And then everyone is arguing about, no, it's not the IOC. It's the whatever, whatever, which just escaped my head. Um, but at the end of the day, when you are competing at that level, you are for sure um, a puppet in someone's hand, but you're also well aware of what you can and what you cannot do. Listen, I'm very concerned about her grandfather. Is he still alive? Because she was taking all this medication. <laughs> I, I, I'm worried about grandpa. Like, is grandpa still alive? And they were like, we don't know how it got into her system. But I'm like, because she ingested it? <laughs> and, well, and again, why it, was he prescribed that? And it wasn't even just the prescription drugs. She was on other heart medication that was not prescription. I and mean, we have to look at what it is. And were her coaches, this is why I think it's a bigger issue than just that. Were her coaches in on it absolutely but at the end of the day if russia wasn't at the olympics and they should not have been there because they have been under doping sanctions since what 14 16 what was what was their new name that they came up with roc the russian <laughs> olympic committee okay anytime your country has to change its name in order to compete i mean your country is acting running under an alias Oh. And this is okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Shakari, well, like, I get it. I understand that the rules are the rules, but she wasn't taking anything that was uh, performance enhancing. I would like to know whose performance, <laughs> other than nap time performance, is enhanced by pot. But that's what's so funny about it. If she's freaking puff, puff passing, and she's still running rings around y'all. Then you're like, well, shit, what happens when she's clean for a week? Damn. I mean, she's probably still running around the circles. <laughs> if, if that was her suppressed. Yeah, I, I, and, I don't like get that, it. That's the part that is like dumbfounded. And so she can't. <laughs> that's right. We're shaking our heads, too, because I mean, there's no explanation. There's. There is no explanation for it. <laughs> but, I, you know, it's like the thing of it is it's like it's not a performance enhancing drug. So if she's smoking up and she's still flying by people, y'all just didn't want her there because you were like, Listen, dang, she's got all that hair. That's, that shit's not aerodynamic, man. <laughs> and she's still like on fire. She got hair. She got, I mean, she's only like this big. Those but... nails, I mean. <laughs> She got she hair. accidentally hit someone running, <laughs> they'd need a blood transfusion. Like, she is no joke. And you can't take that talent away from her unless you have to really dig deep. And, you know, I think it's time to revisit those rules. And you know what? I'm kind of of the mindset at this point, maybe there needs to be two different leagues. There needs to be the people that just, you know, <laughs> they just l take nothing and they live in a bubble. And then there's the dopers and, you know, their, their necks are this wide and their heads only this big and they've got all kinds of other issues. But doping is such a major issue at this point. And, and yeah. you know, I couldn't pay attention to this last Olympics. I could not get behind it other than the half pipe on the last, in the last few days because that was something Glenn was watching. I was like, oh, damn. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's just so tainted. And don't forget about the... 
ski jumpers. Did you hear about the ski jumpers who were all disqualified? The suits? Yes, for the suits that they were wearing that they'd worn all through competitive sport, you know, all year. But, right. and I guess people had complained that, you know, when you're there and at the Olympics, you lose weight. It's just what happens. But because they lost weight, their costumes, outfits, uniforms, whatever, weren't tight enough. So yeah. they were disqualified. I mean, who are these rules for? Is this just rules for the sake of rules? But then, but then it's like, but then it's like, so who checked the uniform prior to the competition? So you let them do all this stuff and then you disqualified them because they were there. They, they jumped. A couple of them jumped. Mm -hmm. And then again, it was commentary. Even beyond that, it was commentary on a woman's body and their Always. costume and Always. what they have to wear. Commentary on a woman's body. And again, when we get back to that costume outfit wardrobing piece, if we look at sport and what women are forced to wear and what men get to wear, you know, women are walking around with napkins on in, in every single sport. It's, and they're not know, even, they're like cocktail napkins. They're not even like the rectangle no, dinner napkins. No. They're like cocktail napkins. I mean, listen, figure skating, it's cold out there. Give me some pants. They just allowed pants. I want to say this year, or maybe it was last year. I can't remember. Uh, within the past few seasons for the free skate for women. Why do your cha-chas need to be hanging out in order for you to do a good routine? They don't. That's men. And, and really, really angry people who just want to judge people based on the way they look. Yeah. Because you and, know what? And, if I'm wearing a napkin, I can still do Pilates. Yeah. My Pilates is still good, but I might get, you know, brush burn. But I'm just saying it does not affect my performance. No, and it's still just about, it's, it's you know, if, you know, synchronized swimming, all of the swimming stuff, you go, okay, yeah, they're in the water, they're in the pool. This is what people wear when they're in the water and when they're in the pool. But there's so much, it, it, there's just so much focus still. Again, we're still talking about an outfit that a woman wore. We're not even talking about her ability to do this big old crazy ski jump and not crash into someone because somebody actually did crash into a reporter. But we're not talking about their skill set or their ability. And I read something that was talking about how those ski jump outfits are actually um, more rounded in the hip to accentuate a woman's body. And then I'm like, but they're Asians and they're little. They're not walking around with badunka dunk. And it just, it just irritates me because it's like, we're having this conversation. These are some of the leanest people on planet earth. 100%. When you, when you are competing at this level, except for if you're deadlifting or if you're wrestling, depending on your weight, but these athletes are some of the leanest people on earth and you're worried about them looking feminine. When they're ski jumping. <laughs> when they're ski I mean, I've never been like, oh, well, that's a really <laughs> feminine kind of jump she's doing. It's never happened to me. And they tell you, you don't have to guess because there's a little ticker tape at the bottom that says women's ski jump or men's ski jump or women's speed skating or men's speed. So we, we don't have to guess, even if we may not see who they are. I mean, honestly, you can't tell the males and the females in all of the snowboarding and um, uh, not, not, I don't want to call it recreational skiing, but you know what I'm trying to say. You can't even tell because they're all the same height. They're all the same size and they're in big poofy pants. <laughs> exactly. And yes, Evie says here, move with Evie says, 
um, it's very frustrating to be reduced to an image. Exactly. Yeah. Let me pivot this real quick too, because we're about to get knocked off. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to figure skating for a second because everyone's like goo gooing over this Camelia Valieva person, mm -hmm. the cheater, whether it was her fault or not, again, mm -hmm. it's still cheating. So we have to call mm -hmm. it what it is. Surya Bonali did those axles 30 years ago. And do you know what figure skating did? They banned them because nobody else could do them. So they were dangerous. Just like what happened with Simone Biles this last summer or whenever that was, I can't even remember. I don't know when mm -hmm. it was. Um, but mm -hmm. again, the skills were taken away because those at the top mm -hmm. did what people at the top are supposed to do, which is mm -hmm. perform at the highest level of sport. That is what the Olympics is. The Olympics is a joke. Yep. They, so now all of a sudden it's okay to do these axles again. Why? And now you have a black woman who has won speed skating. Did she do an axle? No, but it's just, Oh, that you story. That was a great story too, by the way. Now that is the type of Olympic story that I want to be hearing. Mm -hmm. it's, that but is you're like not hearing over. about it, but you're not hearing about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we heard about it for 12 seconds or so, but this whole mm -hmm. doping thing has completely clouded everything. Yep. Yep. So it's also, it's just when a black woman shows prowess, then shows ability, shows agility, shows um, they are at the top fortitude, the pinnacle. She is literally intentionally diminished. I remember watching Surya skate and I just, I can hear in my mind still, you know, she's an athletic skater, but she's not really an artist. She's not Nancy Kerrigan. She's not this, that, the other thing, you know, all of these things. When, first of all, nobody was worried about how that negativity was going to affect her. Nobody was worried about what it was like for a brown skin, dark brown skinned young woman to be on the ice, mm -hmm. different body type, mm -hmm. different culture, all of these things. Nobody cared about her feelings when they told her that she was too athletic for the sport or that her Correct. legs were too big for the sport or that her costume, I remember this one too, her costume didn't cover her butt enough. When, None of where them was do. All the outrage then? None of them but, do. But she had a, a really, she had a butt. really perfect, a butt that people pay for now. By the yes. Way. I was more interested in her hamstrings. Just <laughs> Her hamstrings were ridiculous. Yeah, I was oh more interested in her hamstrings. They were ridiculous. She, but she was incredible. She was incredible. If you can find it out there, there is a um, documentary about her and what she went through. I, I've only seen it once and I didn't see the whole thing, but I just, I mean, it took me back to being a kid, watching her and just listening to the way they tore her down. And very mm -hmm. few, I think Scott Hamilton was the only one that had anything positive to say about her. And that, that speaks volumes. I mean, that's what happened to, um, was it Gabby Douglas? I don't think hi Robin Gabby Douglas yeah I think so she couldn't handle she really couldn't handle the pressure she she's was, the one that they were saying like why is her hair nappy they like didn't why don't like they her do hair yeah right I, I think she was also she's come out later and said that there were some issues just beyond that and learning issues and all of that but I believe Nasser got to her too and you know on top of all the challenges of sport and getting back to it again, Nasser was protected and yep. Valieva is protected. Yep. 
all of those other gymnasts, all of those other athletes left in the cold. Yep. So it's, this was our current event show in case you guys didn't realize I know, that. I know. So we're, we're back to guests next week, but. Uh, there's a lot going on on planet Earth. And I would say this. Um, you better say it fast before they kick us off. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, you know, just find that, find that moment in time where you can be kind and generous. And I know that I'm speaking to a wonderful audience and you, you always are kind and generous, but maybe someone needs a little extra smile, a little extra kindness, um, because there's a lot going on. It's celebrate not always going to be this way. Yes, please celebrate the good. Celebrate the good. Celebrate the good people. Celebrate the people that really want to see things change for the better and are, are change makers because those people need to know that they're making an impact somewhere. And when you're deep down in the trenches, sometimes you don't know Mm -hmm. how big of an impression you're making on people. Yep. So by celebrating those people that are out there in the trenches making the changes, what you're doing is you're uplifting them, you're giving them manna and fuel to be able to continue forward. And to pay it forward. Yeah. 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 It's, it's fuel. I can't say it enough. So on that note, because, you know, Instagram is being all Instagrammy, we're jumping off for tonight, but we will see you again next week. Friday. 1.30 on Friday, 1.30 Eastern time. The 4th at 12.30. <sighs> Midwest. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to us tonight. Thank you. We're back to guests, like I was saying, next week. So uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation here on Thought Flow. It is the highlight of my week. And uh, I dare say Nikki's too, except for when Carrie's making dinner, in which case, you know, we just don't count. But that's okay. She loves us deep down. Thank you. Bye, everybody. guys. Thank you. Happy weekend.